Now you guys jump in right in. We're going to use grid modeler here and I'm going to just go ahead and pull up my grid and I'm going to show you some of the intricate details. So you can just start drawing, left click place, any shape that you can think of. And I'll just make something like that and I'm going to right click, go to the edit menu, select this, hit E and now if I want I can grab these verts and hit B to bevel them and add chamfer. I can add a bevel. I really like the chamfer right there. It's going to look good. And for this spot, I can actually add a bevel. I'll put six segments right there. If I wanted to individually move this because I wanted something a little bit bigger, go ahead and do that. And now if I grab these two and hit B for bevel, I can bevel these two and add couple of neat little chamfers to the end of that. Also if I grab these two or I grab this one I can hit A and that is like subdividing the mesh so now I've got some more verts in there and I can hit B to bevel this one out and just change those angles to whatever I want and if I don't like that how it is I can simply come in delete all these hit G on this one and bring it back to where I had it and leave it alone. Then I can hit E to jump out of that. Now I'm still in this menu where I could bevel it, so I could bevel this if I wanted, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Now hit Shift, well actually I'll just hit D to duplicate it. And now I want to just left click somewhere on the grid and I wanna just select this one and I can hit N to flip that and then G kind of move that down and line it up. Now I can duplicate both of these and this gets a little tricky sometimes but I'm just gonna hit D and duplicate that and bring it over. Make sure you don't have the other one selected or it's going to really throw you for a loop. Now you can flip these with N or you can hit M and then flip it accordingly and then line it up. Now I'm not done yet so what I could do is I'll right click and jump back over to the uh, base menu. I just draw a basic standard line straight across. Space bar to let go. Right click, left click to select just that. Hit I to do a nice inset. And I can put that pretty much anywhere I want. I could also duplicate that. Put one here, left click to release it and then scale this one down a good bit. And let's move it something like that. And let's duplicate that one, put it right there, and get this really neat little pattern started up. And I'm really not done yet. Let's see, I'll hit C for circle, and hold down Shift, middle mouse. And I can put a triangle right there, right click, just select this one, scale it down, D to duplicate. Left click, just select this one, hit N, G, and I'll line it up. I'll grab both of these, and I don't have to do much now. I can just duplicate these and throw them over here, about the general area, something like that. Now I hit Q, and now I've got this very intricate Boolean pattern. I've also got access to the grid modeler set up here so I could create faces if I wanted to and extrude all of that out. I can create line art, which is pretty neat. The line art actually is pretty cool. You can do a lot with that. I'm going to leave this as a Boolean. You could do a slice as well, but I'm going to use this as a Boolean cut because I like how that looks. Let's see, the Blender Exact Solver. You could use that to kind of clean up all those connections, but it does leave you with some triangles. Uh, so there could be a little cleanup afterwards. You don't really have to. And so now I've got this set up. I like it. And it seems like I might have the mirror on, but it's not really... Oh, there it goes. It mirrored to the bottom of this one. Let's see if we can mirror that detail to the other side there we go so well at least this one has it i can fix that later so this one has a ton of detail on it now which is what i really wanted so i'll go ahead and apply that 
And now I want to just take this directly into Philogix. And let's see, let's go in and select that. And I'll do a little smart UV project on that very, very quick. And I want to just add a new pick shader, metalness workflow. I'll bake that with a GPU compute quality of 2, margin 16, and 2K. All right, that's cool. So I baked my normal, my ambient, and my curvature. All right, so now that we've got all that glorious detail on there, we can pull out the logics and just go ahead and bake that. Just bake it at 2048, and I've got it set to a quality of 2, baking the normals, the ambient occlusion, and the curvature. All right, now that's baked. I've actually got a save. Um, I've got a texture that is saved. So if I come down here, I can just grab this pick surface right here. It is the same yellow. And all you have to do is click the save brush here. You can also import the brush after you've exported it. So if you export this and have to put it on a different computer, you can re-import that brush if you like it a whole lot. Now, one of the easiest ways to get that brush is to have an image editor where you can sample things like you searched you know you've got your reference images and so i'm just going to pull up my mech folder i've got a few nice pictures in here that i found i like this one a lot and what i did is like if you were to go to the base layer for your metalness workflow you grab the color here and you grab the teardropper and i just sampled this little decal and that's how i got this and then i just click save and then it's identified right here so you're able to pick this up later. And of course you can rename it to something else. I'll just call it Mech Yellow 1. I can hit enter and come back over here. And I'd probably have to save that again so it shows up. And let's see. Yeah, there we go. So Mech Yellow. I like that a lot better. That way it's more identifiable. And so then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add my smart layer. And I want to put the smart rust on there. And so now, if you do it right, and you move the origin back to the geometry. I'm not sure if that actually has anything to do with it, but I think it does. So if you move the origin back to the geometry, you do a good bake on this. And sometimes you actually have to rebake. So you can turn this off to rebake the curvature map if you're not getting what you should. And also you can do a quick little smart UV project. And you don't have to really do too much because the smart materials will kind of take over for you. And so then you can grab the surface grain now and all that nice detail will show up a lot better. And you can see that at a slight distance. So whatever color scheme you pick, just kind of stick with that. And I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to smash that subscribe, smash that like on the way out. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial lesson.